Hi there, Bill Horsecatter here with another episode of The Radical Geek. And this episode, I'm at a local comic convention called RockCon, where I'm going to be talking to other comic book creators. Yes, the people that make the four color panels from superheroes to sci-fi, comedy, slice of life stuff, and a lot of varieties of stuff beyond just normal superhero stuff. And we're going to talk to a few of them and see why they do what they do and have some fun. Hope you enjoy. All right, here I've got Jeremy Kahn, who pushed, uh, basically writes a comic book called Alien Summer. And can you tell me about the characters in Alien Summer and what's about? Uh, um, the story's about Earth finds out about the existence of aliens, and as a result, a treaty is formed that allows for the export and import of goods. And Earth's biggest export is pop culture and media. Aliens just love Earth entertainment and their imagination as a whole. They love it so much that aliens come to live on Earth and experience Earth life. And the story, the story I wrote revolves around this one particular alien who comes to Earth as part of an exchange program where she um, stays over the course of a summer living with this human boy, having different adventures over each issue, basically like episodic things. Each issue is a different adventure over the course of the summer. Okay, um, all right. and what inspired you to write this uh, comic? Well, I was a big, uh, big fan of like anime and manga, and I wanted to somehow work that into a new story because, um, I'll be a thing real quick, sorry. Okay, no problem. Um, basically, I'm a big fan of anime and manga, and um, I wanted to somehow work that into a comic book. And I wanted to do it in a way that I could use, I like doing like family, um, all ages comics, okay. with some sense of humor. So, and I like sci-fi as well, so I wanted to somehow mix everything together. Okay. So my inspiration was basically, um, that type of media, as well as my love for sci-fi and pop okay. culture. And um, have you done anything before this, or is this your first publication? I have done another one. Um, it was about this um, girl who develops these superpowers, and due to having these powers, she's bullied at school for being different and unique. Right. And um, she can't exactly do anything about it because she has super strength. She may accidentally hurt someone. Okay. So she takes all the bullying in stride and. Eventually she be able to show what she's truly made of and realize how great she really is. Okay, and um, where do you see your current issue, uh, Alien Star, where do you think it's going to be going, what should we look forward to? Well, from here on, the um, next couple of issues are going to be about her starting to try to adapt to human life. You know, because basically her understanding of human culture is what she's read about in comics and seen in movies and manga and stuff. So she doesn't exactly have the best sense of what human life's really about. So sort of a disconnect. All right. Uh, okay. Um, thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. And uh, thank you for coming on. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I've got Sal or Tara here, and he's got a few titles here. And uh, can you tell me what you're working on currently? Uh, right now, I'm working on Until We Sleep, uh, which is a horror-based comic. Okay. Um, I'm gonna finish up. I'm wrapping that up on issue two. Okay. And then somebody else is taking over. Uh, okay. Because I decided to work on my two stories right now is Midnight Eye, and then I, I want to get into TMNT doing the sequential art. So. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about what Until We Sleep is about? Uh, Until We Sleep is like a modern version of the Universal's monsters, okay. just a modern take of it. Uh, but the characters' powers have been changed a bit. So Frankenstein's monster, for example, uh, is a huge Hulk-like person, and he can rip off his arms and use the demons that he fights. Okay. Uh, he re replace any part of his body. So if, in battle, if he gets damaged, he can repair himself. Right. So it's not like truly Frankenstein's monster. Because we didn't want to get yeah, we didn't want to get in trouble with the Universal. So we had to make our own twist of everything. Okay. Like our vampire, he doesn't suck blood. He sucks people's powers. Okay. So he doesn't take you know. It's like more of a psychic or soul sucking. Right. Right. Okay. And so I had to retool all the characters because the writer, when he approached me, he didn't have any concepts or anything. So I had to every, make everybody from scratch. Okay. And I was the one that came up with the idea of doing the vampire sucks energy. Okay. 
did, uh, you also said you did uh, TNMT, which is Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtles. And how was it to work on that one, uh, property? It was awesome, but I get to work with the turtles, but it was, it's hard to get into the property because I want to do the sequential art inside. Doing the cover, you know, you do it one and done. I want to, I want to keep working with the turtles because, uh, you know, I love the turtles. So. Okay. And tell me about your new one, Midnight Eye. Uh, Midnight Eye is one that I've been working on since I was a kid. Uh, just couldn't get the story right. But now that I'm more mature, I, I was able to write the story, sit down, and get it to work. And okay. uh, it, it's it's been a labor of love because I've had to retool the story so many times. But now I feel like I've gotten a concrete story down. And now that I have somewhat of a fan base, um, a lot of my fans are actually looking forward to it. So. All right. What's the, what can you tell me who the uh, characters are in Midnight Eye? Well, Midnight Eye, the main character is called Lee Shenlong. He's actually half god, half angel. So he doesn't know that he has these powers and he's fighting an army of angels. Because the angels are bad guys in my comic. Okay. And Lucifer is kind of like his mentor. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird take on mythology because Buddha's in it. Um, we have all these different mythological people, um, Thor, not the Thor from Marvel, but uh, the, the Norse god Thor. And, so it's, it's going to be a fun take. Uh, one of my buddies said it's kind of like a serious version of the super, super god friends from South Park. So. <laughs> okay. Alright. And um, is there anything... Let me ask you, how did you get kind of started drawing and doing comics for that? Well, comics I broke in with TMNT, so that was my first big professional break. Uh, but I've been drawing since I was a kid, so okay. it's just, it just comes naturally. That's cool. And uh, is there anything you want to do in the future? I want to work for Marvel or DC. That's okay. that's my big okay. my big my big short term goal right now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Bill. This is uh, Salatera, and check out his work. Thanks. The Flashbulb Podcast: Three to ten minutes of fiction brought to you thrice weekly. From cosmic horrors to fisticuffs, fast cars, and smart mouths, we've got a chill for every spine. Find it all at flashpulp.com or search for it on iTunes. <laughs>
All right. Okay. So how did you pick up? Uh, how did you get into making a uh, starting with the comic? And, uh, how did you get started drawing? Well, I've always loved to draw, and I was diagnosed with high functioning autism when I was younger and mental illness. So it used to be very difficult for me to express myself with words. But I found that when I had paper and a pencil and I could give my fears and anxieties an identity by visually representing them, it helped my problems seem less overwhelming. And it helped me find my voice and now I want to help others by raising awareness. Yeah, I'm, I have ADD and I take medication for it. Okay. For, for it because I, I have a hard time functioning and work trying to focus on what I need to do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so I understand exactly about you know, some mental health issues and all that. Mm -hmm. Alright, Liz, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Any writer will likely tell you, getting published is much harder than the writing itself. Who do I approach? How do I query? What should I put into my query? All valid questions and ones not always easily answered. On Get Published, I get you those answers. Authors, agents, and publishers talk about what works and what doesn't. Get Published is available on iTunes or on GetPublishedPodcast.com. Okay, I've got Nigel Frank, Carrington. Yeah, Carrington. Carrington, yeah. uh, who is a comic artist. He's got a lot of properties here. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, like you said, the first one here was Midnight Robber. What was that about? Oh, uh, boy. That's a, a Trinidad folklore about a, a, a demon that possesses this guy. And he able to get like uh, mystical magic powers and stuff like that, you know. You know, it was pretty cool doing that book. Um, I did it for like a friend of mine called yeah, Chris Riley from Trinidad. Yeah, so yeah, he. Yeah. Okay, and um, okay, the next one was Truth Among Bones. Yeah, that's a kind of weird title. Is um. I wasn't so heavily influenced by Japanese anime when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? I thought of like a, a really folklore or fantasy type book that will have this uh, this old guy who used to tell these stories to these kids and um, he was in a village and the, the kids thought he was a creepy old guy and uh, they found out that all the mystical characters that he talked about was real. You know what I'm saying at the end of the book and stuff like that, and it ties in with my title that I created after what's called Anthill. Okay. Right? So, yeah. Okay, and then the next one you do is Nancy? Yeah, the Nancy is a Trinidad folklore. It's, a, it is, it's originally an African folklore about a spider who tricks uh, people to get what he wants. Okay. You know, so I did like a scientific spin on it. Okay. You know, where this guy, you know, he, he was experimented on and he, he got uh, some uh, some spider, spider powers. But, you know, a lot of people might say, ah, Spider Man or whatever like that. But, you know, saying it's more like a horror book. He was like chopping off heads and, you know, kind of horror type stuff. But, uh, oh, yes, yeah, a family show, I'm sorry. But, but um, yeah, you know, he was doing like, like really, um, like Spawn like type stuff, you know. Okay. I was like heavily influenced by Spawn and okay. stuff like that. All right. What's that one about? Oh, okay. Well, until was a, a, a book I created when I was back home in Trinidad. I was 17 at the time. And uh, one day I came home from work, really hungry, and uh, my food was covered with ants. Okay. Right? So I stuck it in the microwave and I took it for a spin. And being back home, you know, it wasn't as privileged, you know, as a lot of people are, you know, around the world. So I, I ate the food anyways. Well, um,. My brother and I, we was heavily into image comic books and we wanted to create a comic book. So I was like, what if I create a book where this guy had like these really cool ant like powers where you know he could breathe fire, spray ants on his fingertips and his antennas was like swords. Like I said, you know, it's heavily influenced by Spawn and I like the movie, the Spawn movie and his cape was going in and out his back and I was like, that would be cool if his antennas could go in and out his head and you know, and do all this cool stuff, you know, so. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, gun, gun, gun. It's uh, uh every time I see that title, people like gun, you know. And um, it was about it's, it's, it's about this kid who um, who 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 um, who was part of a a lifestyle he was trying to provide for his little daughter. And while doing that, you know, he made some bad choices and he got killed pretty early. Okay. But bef uh, before he got killed, he signed up to this uh 
military program where they take your body when you die and they experiment on it. So they took his body and they experiment on it and he woke up. Yeah, kind of like, you know, we're still soldier. He woke up and his face was a gun. You know, his face was like some robotic face with this big bullet um, thing and he, yeah, muzzle and he could shoot bullets. You know, his face flips inside out. So like, you know, had to pull his mask off. His face flips and turn into whatever. You know, to disguise himself. So you know, it's a pretty cool story. He sprayed guns out his hands and out his feet, all over his body. It's just like guns, just flipping and doing all that crazy stuff. It's pretty cool. Huh? Well, the Ying Yang Gang was um, it was a, was originally a spin-off from uh, one of the villains from Antil named uh, Agent Striker. Right now, in the, the series, a lot of people was calling him Sir, Sir, Sir all the time and people was wondering why they calling this lady sir well she was originally an agent that was went into an experiment that became a female you know so it's, so it's, it's a, yeah, yeah tricky yeah interesting okay and the last one you have here is the guardians uh the guardians is a uh, is a uh, my uh my my interpretation of the spiritual world now a lot it have like a lot of interpretations of the spiritual world and biblical stuff and stuff like that. This is just my take on it. And I fuse like uh, like a lot of stuff that I like like Thundercats, He Man and um, all these gargoyles and, and all these stories, you know, I fuse it into one and make these angels that can mutate into birds and they have swords and you know and they are turned into fire and all that stuff. So, yeah. So, uh, how did you start doing uh, comic books? Uh, yeah, that's a good step. Yeah, <laughs> Alright, so let me sum it up. Um, when I was young, I started drawing, tracing out of my coloring book and stuff like that. And um, then one day, um, uh, you know, um, we met a couple guys in our neighborhood who like comic books. And they introduced, it, they introduced us into comic books. And uh, we just, you know, fell in love with it and I just I dubbed my drawing skills I already had into like a comic book style drawing. That's the summary right there. Anything else you want to do in the future? Oh man, I have a lot of stuff I want to do in the future. I want to get into film, I want to get into animation, like every aspect of the entertainment business, okay. right? I would like to, to, to touch on. Right. You know what I'm saying? When they're making like, uh, making scores for movies, I, I just want to, just, just want to engulf myself in that whole, in that whole world. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you so much. Thanks. I have E.B. Reed, he does Steamer and Victor comic, and can you tell me about what the comic's about? Um, well, it's about a wizard boy and his robot friend, and their adventures for hire, which means that they are trying to get hired to go on quests with you, and they end up getting hired by someone, and they go on a big adventure and get into lots of trouble. Okay. Um, how did you come up with the idea of the story? Um, I've always been a storyteller. I've always really liked telling stories, and so I've always had a big, like, like a lot of different stories going on. And so I decided to just choose one, and I decided that I really liked robots, and I really like magic, so why not put them together? Okay. So how did the, so basically if you read the book and find out the story of how these two characters got together, basically just mm -hmm. got together. Mm -hmm. Alright, um, what style of, what's the style of the actual story? What uh, genre would you put it in? Um, I guess I would say like family friendly because it, it, it really is enjoyable for all ages and right. it's kind of a comedy, kind of an adventure. Um, Kind of fantasy. It's a lot of different things into one. Okay, well that works. Sounds like it's you know pretty good premise in that. And uh, when you uh, when you think about the story, I'm mean, like, you just got that one book which is graphic novel you've got right mm -hmm. now. And um, have you done any? Have you worked on any, anything? Is this the only thing you have working on right now? Um, this is my debut graphic novel. So I was working on this project for about a year and a half. Okay. Um, but now that it's finished, I'm moving on to other projects. And what other projects would you be moving on to? Um, I really want to start a webcomic okay. um, and tell some more stories and 
same characters or is it different characters? Different characters. Different characters, okay. I've had enough of these guys for now. <laughs> Alright, um, so, um, and you were doing, like I say, so it's a family friendly mm -hmm. book. And that's so, what was, what's kind of the thought process you do when you try creating a story and you say, no, we can't do that, lyrics and stuff like that, so. Yeah, um, I've always been really inspired by animated movies, so I like to kind of view it like what would, what would be in an animated movie and what would be better left out for something different. Okay. Um, what do you use to create the computer or do you actually hand dry it? Um, I use a Wicom tablet um, on the computer and I use Photoshop. Okay. So, uh, sounds like a lot of professors use like a tablet. Mm -hmm. I have some friends who work at, uh, I know acquaintances that work at Crafty Network, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright. Um, is there any food? Okay, but what count? Uh, do you have any idea of what, that, uh, what style or genre that count is going to be? That one would be a little darker, I think. Um, I wanted to make something that would be good for kids, um, but I want to do something a little bit of a more of a darker fantasy, just to kind of experiment with different types of stories. Okay. Um, I like to read uh, graphic novels and uh, web comics. I'm not really so much of a superhero person, okay. um, so I really enjoy uh, the graphic novel Bone by Jeff Smith, and I follow a couple of web comics online. And I enjoy reading those. Okay. Thank you.